So I want to take a little bit of time and tell you kind of my story. I know that there's a lot of engineers out there, a lot of people going into engineering right now for computers, for, you know, computer science, making sweet science to computers. And, you know, you're doing React, you're doing JavaScript, you, you feel defeated. You're like, well, maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe I'm not good enough. If only I would have started earlier, right? You know the excuses. You know the things that kind of fill you up. And so I wanted to take a moment and give you my story. Now, I think the most important part of my story is when I was four years old, I saw porn for the first time. And from every day up pretty much until this day of my life now, I have thought about porn. It's just been something that's been with me my entire life from that moment and has really robbed me of a lot of things in my life. After that, the next most important thing that you just kind of have to know is my dad died when I was seven. So I didn't have a lot of, you know, I didn't have a lot of parental figure in my life for a lot of my years. My mom did the best she could, but she had three kids and she was working like 80 hours a week. She is a saint, a boss. She's amazing. I absolutely love my mom and I have zero problems with how she raised me. But the reality is, is that most of the time I was raising myself, which means I never learned how to like take things really seriously. So that's why by the time I graduated high school, I graduated with a 2.16. Okay. I was not top of the you know student chart. I was pretty much dead in the middle. And one of the teachers I had told me I was the worst student she's ever had. So, you know, wasn't the best. But at the end of high school is where everything really started to go downhill. Now, I had a girlfriend during that time, and it was kind of like a longer relationship. And ultimately, it didn't work out. Surprise, surprise. And I just felt like I put all my identity and worth into it. And so, of course, I tried to commit suicide during that time. And I just felt this huge, deep hole inside of me, which ultimately led to me just stopping all forms of care for my life. And so from there on out, I just did as much drugs as I could. Of course, the whole porn thing was every single day. I was very addicted to that. I just didn't realize I was addicted to that. And then, of course, it went from smoking pot, mushrooms, LSD, cocaine, all the way up to methamphetamines. Did meth quite a few times. But for whatever reason, I just had this desire or this, I, I don't know what it was, this calling, destiny, telling me I had to go to college. And so my grandfather, because my dad dying when I was seven, said he would pay for my college. And lo and behold, Montana State University accepted me to go to college. College, so I went. And of course, I always was really fast at typing. I loved playing video games. So I figured computers, I could make video games, right? Don't we all think that at some point? And when I go to school, I did nothing but party. I drank, I smoked, more cocaine, too much LSD to the point where I uh, had problems with my vision for years. And of course, that led to me dropping out and being done with school. But I still had all this unhappiness and like this deep, like, I don't know how to say it other than like just despair in my life still at this point. And so I did go back to school in the spring and I actually ended up completing that. But during that time, I just had this extremely real encounter with God to the point where I could see myself standing on a fork effectively, where it's like on one side, I keep going down the path I'm going. And it's just like, there's more of what I already have. I'm unhappy. I just hate my life or I can try something different. And I really did try this something different. I said, okay, I'm gonna, I, I don't know what this means. I guess I'm following God now. And after that point, nothing changed. I was still just as addicted to porn. I still just did drugs. I even, in fact, I did LSD after I did that. But something happened in my heart. It's where every time I did anything, I felt like a conscious, right? It's like the thing that wasn't there for all these years woke up inside of me. And all of a sudden, I just knew I was not made to do that. And so this led me down a completely different path. I actually passed school. Sure, it was like C's and B's, but I still passed it. It was the first time I ever really passed anything. And of course, you know, we go through the summer, I go the next year, and I kind of fall back in line with my old friends. And so I intentionally drop out at that point. I just say, you know what, I cannot do college. I'm going to go down the wrong road here. At that point, I was still really struggling with pornography. That was by far the hardest. Still smoking cigarettes, really finding that difficult to stop. Uh, the drugs part, it was easier. It was more just like avoid the people. But cigarettes and porn are very, very hard because you don't ha you, you can avoid people and still do those. So, of course, in the springtime, I went to just like a local school. I just, I felt so defeated. I felt like I had no idea what I was doing. I thought I might join seminary at that point. I, I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just like, I don't even know who I am, I am anymore. So I do a little local programming class, some, some math, some, just some core stuff to get out of the way. Hated it. 
hated it. And then I went to summer school, but I went up back to Montana State University. And something happened during this time. I did Calculus 1. You wouldn't know this from the story I've been telling so far, but I failed pre-calculus twice and barely passed the third time. So Calc 1, I'm like, there's no way. I'm probably not that smart to be able to do these things. And so every single day, after three hours of calculus class, which was five days a week, I'd go to the math learning center, which was available four days a week, and be in there for one to three hours with the tutors. And by the third week, I was cruising. I was covered from head to toe in coconut oil. I was the number one person in the class. Something clicked inside of me. And what it really was was the realization, yes, yeah, smarts will get you far, but hard work will get you further any day of the week and I was just murdering it. By the end we had a final and it was a two hour long test. I did it in less than 30 minutes and was the highest grade in the class. It's just like something happened. I was changed and I started to love school. I started to build this passion for learning, for wanting to pursue excellence and it just kept happening. Every class I took I kept being one of the best or the best at it every single time. But still during all of this I was struggling with porn and cigarettes and it's just like I couldn't break these addictions and it was just eating me up on the inside. I hated it. Then after probably my 5,000th time quitting pornography for whatever reason, it just clicked, it stayed. It was, you know, my, my head and my heart finally made a connection and it just left me along with smoking. It was like I was finally free of these chains. It was amazing. And from there, I just really have felt unstoppable in the sense that I can learn anything. I have proven to myself I can do it. I liked what I was doing. I liked programming. And so I just went nuts over it. I tried to start my own company. I was working like 80 hours a week. My wife and I didn't have a very good relationship at that point because I was working way too hard. I really wish I could have done things probably a little less enthusiastic at that point. You know, fostered a better relationship would have been a smarter move. I got rejected from Google. I got rejected from local companies. I got rejected actually a few times. Went from the top of the top to the bottom pretty quick. But I ended up getting a job at a local place and I hated it. Again, it's just like, man, I'm so bored. I'm dying here. And finally, when I just made the commitment in my heart, I'm going to be happy in this situation. I'm going to find joy regardless of how entertaining my job is, about how much I like doing it. I am going to have joy. I don't need to be happy because of my job. I kid you not, I made that decision on my way to my job that day. And as I was getting coffee, someone from a building next door went, hey, you program, right? And I was like, yeah, I, I, I am a programmer over at Schedulicity. And he was just like, hey, you want to come work over here? I'll give you 50% more money. I was like, yeah, yeah y yes, yes. Yes, I do. And I did it. It was hard. It was awful. But it was amazing all at the same time. It really, really helped up-level me a significant amount. And yes, it did strain my wife and I's relationship. Yes, I probably should have said no more often. But it was also really, really good long-term for my career, which is a hard balance to have. And I really didn't have a good way of saying no at that point. But during all of that, I got to go to a conference where I learned about RxJS. Yes, laugh. I know. Just laugh about it. Go ahead. Laugh about it right? RxJS, right? Anywho, I put that on my resume that I knew it and I started learning and playing with it. And guess what happened? Netflix was looking for people that knew RxJS and they saw that I did it and they offered me an interview and then I got the job. And for me, again, that shows that hard work with a little bit of luck, preparation with timing and boom, I got a great job. And I've been there for the last, uh, you know, eight, nine years. You know, I failed a lot during that intro part of my story. I failed a lot. It took years upon years. There was no magic bullet. There was no one night. Things went from bad to good. It was a decision I made every single moment. It was a decision I had to make every single day, multiple times a day to do it right. And during this time of the year, this is, by the way, Christmas season 2022, there's this whole idea of New Year's resolutions. And I've always hated them because there's not just some point in time, some new new turning of the wheel in which all of a sudden you have the ability to be somebody different. No, make your resolution a daily resolution, a minute resolution if you have to. Say no a thousand times, 10,000 times. You have to pursue the change you want to be and there's going to be a ton of really hard moments and I know there's a plenty of people right now in this moment who are just learning how to program and they feel defeated. You feel like you're not quite learning it or maybe you're a junior engineer and you're hating your job. Trust me, keep building those skills. Pursue the things that are good and valuable and give it time, 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 
time. It just takes a little bit of time. It took me about six years. You're probably smarter than me. Honestly, it'll probably take you way shorter. But nonetheless, don't give up quickly. Keep pursuing keep pushing in. Now, there's lots of parts of my story I didn't tell. I tried to smooth over the bits, but I just wanted to be kind of honest about the higher points, which is just like, you know, I didn't have a great childhood. I didn't have a great many things in my life, but I still did something with it, and I want you to be able to do it too. Hey, I hope you like this story. Hey, hit the like button, hit the sub button. It'd mean a lot to me, and I, I just been loving building this channel, so appreciate you all genuinely. Thank you.